This video is sponsored by Nebula Classes and specifically Patrick Willem's brand new class, How to Make a Movie. And he knows, he made one. Visit my link down in the description to sign up with a discount and start learning from the best. Seems to be a little extra strange in Wanda in the Marvel logo this time. And that makes these Multiverse of Madness style opening credits. Dang, it even ends on a sling ring. And just dropping us right into the action with the grooviest hair dude strange to date. But also while we're here, these opening notes are very reminiscent of the WandaVision theme, which would make sense since it's actually her attacking Defender Strange in America through the Slinky Dude. Eso lo mató. No. Con eso lo matamos. The first words spoken aren't in English? Love when the audience gets treated like adults. We are not messing around this time. That's a gnarly magical wound. We must have found a director who's familiar with horror this time around. This is the only way. And I thought that ponytail was the most evil thing about him. Oh, come on, this again? Why, because it's a Marvel movie? Your sacrifice is worth more than your life. Come up and... What, I don't care if he's a good guy, he was gonna kill a kid. Come up and... Okay, he gets a slight moment of redemption for cutting her free with his last act. What a slick transition to Bob Newhart us about this cold open. You kids know about the Bob Newhart show, right? It's so easy to forget that he's one of the celebrities, so everyone is weird around him. While I was gone, I lost both my cats and my brother. Priorities. But I really do like that the MCU isn't playing the blip off like it wouldn't totally screw everyone's life up. The best surgeon and the best superhero. But you still didn't get the girl. I mean, he deserves that one. He didn't even climb a Ferris wheel for her. Ah, that old classic Jesus trick. Sorry, illusion, Michael. I wish it had been different. Oof, no, no to this. Do not do this at the wedding. You want to apologize or let them know how you feel? Great. You have literally every other day. You're playing yourself strange. Little details like this are great. That one is at least his second. But in the context of his character, this chug it moment isn't a cool let's get it done moment. Strange is emotionally struggling and also probably going into this fight buzzed. Rough. Either way, what a masterful exit. A king at the height of his craft. It's not showing off if it's what you were born to do. I mean, it is, but if Megamind can do it, Strange can do it. Wait, did he just summon a monster head to stop that car from flipping onto people? This is amazing, so who directed this movie? I love the look on the monster's face as he stares directly at Strange as if he's pissed that Strange just revealed him and then totally surprised by Strange disassembling the bus. And fun fact, Garganto's eye is a scan of Elizabeth Olsen's eye. Tight moment that again shows how old hat it all is for Strange, since he immediately pivots to concern about his deja vu. Sick match cut. Yes, monster vision. Where have I seen that before? There he is. Is the chorus singing Wong? Because they should, and it would be amazing. Helpfulness. And again, he's at least two drinks in. Makes sense he's so zonked. Yes, the underbits look as gross as I expected. Sound design matches perfectly. Who directed this? You know, it's ancient custom to bow in the presence of the Sorcerer Supreme. Yeah, I'm aware of the customs. It's almost like Strange has read the comics and knows he's supposed to be Sorcerer Supreme, but glad to see he's handling it with so much maturity. Oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's incredible. It takes a confident man to know that your wife dated a superhero and still think that superhero is awesome. Kudos for finding a guy who's good with who he is, Christine. Speedy thing goes in, speedy thing comes out. Ha! America's star shape cuts the stone. She was always using her powers, even when she didn't know. Is that the same monster? Does Strange keep pieces of one monster to use as he pleases? Seriously, who directed- Oh dang, the monster hands popped out its eyeball. Right, it's Ra it's Raimi. Sam Raimi directed this. Shoots webs. Yeah, bingo. Out of his butt? No, maybe, I don't know. Love this. First, that they basically know nothing about Spider-Man after No Way Home. And I know MCU movies get crap for always having these types of jokes about superhero names, but it's because Superhero names are ridiculous. Also, somewhere in the multiverse is the Pat and Parnell version of Spider-Man, so America's not wrong for asking questions. It wasn't a dream. Prove it. Something I love about Sam Raimi movies is that there's a lot of quick beats and they go back and forth between horror and comedy. The first time we see this, it feels grotesque. The second time, it feels comedic, like, prove it, kiddo, I'm dead. Will you understand this movie without watching WandaVision? Probably. Should you? Nah, it's great. And honestly, I know a lot of people think the MCU stuff is too interconnected and you can't just enjoy a standalone these days, but I love that the shows and movies are so connected. Back in the day, if you missed an issue of the comics, you were kinda in the dark and there weren't any wikis to get you up to date. So I guess I'm saying consume all content, you plebs? Yeah, that, that seems right. Ooh. 
Oof, on the mid-head stroke cut to Wanda waking up and all the warmth and light being sucked out of the room. Given the choice between the archer with the mohawk or one of the most powerful magic wielders on the planet, it's an easy call. Always appreciate when they acknowledge things like this. Someone like Hulk is super powerful, but sometimes you don't need Hulk smash. Sometimes you need Hulk sit this one out. What if you brought America here? You never told me her name, did you? Oh. I sort of hate the I didn't tell you their name reveal trope. I just always have a hard time buying it. You can't keep up with the conversation, really? But, but the fact that Wanda says this excuses it for me. You know, the hex was the easy part. The lying, not so much. She does not like lying. You created them using magic. That's what every mother does. What an epic and heart-wrenching delivery. Her sacrifice would be for the greater good. How can this be for the greater good? The greater good. Also throwing Ponytail Strange's logic right back at him. You break the rules and become a hero. I do it and I become the enemy. That doesn't seem fair. I'm more sympathetic to Wanda in this movie than most, but I'm not sure that line is the dunk she thinks it is. Strange's rule breaking was to save existence. Wanda's was in response to her own trauma and only benefited her. I'm not even saying if Strange was right, but it's still a false equivalence. Raimi. Loving how the diegetic war drums have become part of the score. That's the most of the Hong Kong and London sanctum. And you're a talking green bull, exciting stuff all around. Minotaur, I know, I know. Live action Rintra is pretty dope, honestly. I blew a hole through the head of the man I loved, and it meant nothing. Yeah, since Strange gave Thanos the time stone, I can imagine why she'd be a little extra peeved at him. Right. I mean, you're gonna run. I'm gonna run. We're all gonna run if you hear your faraway enemy's voice speaking right into and breathing on your ear. Love to see her using her OG Age of Ultron powers. Finally get to see how powerful Wanda actually is in a wide shot where she's taken out dozens of sorcerers at a time. Rainy! See that? You want to freak someone out? Music boxes. Even the Scarlet freaking witch who's about to do this gets freaked out. Just falling. And there's Wanda's reality bending power showing up. I didn't even notice his slingy disappearing in theaters. But yeah, full on nightmare stuff here. Heck yeah, Samara. And this is some commitment. She either cut herself on all the glass or more likely the sharp broken edges of the gong she forced her way through. <laughs> Loving these huge horns. I know some people's eyes might glaze over during sequences like this, but I never get tired of them. Show me every single universe. Live in tribunal heads, bee world, dinos, and comic and paint. Hydra world? Give me a show that covers every one of these, please, and thank you. Pizza Papa always gets paid. Oh my gosh, it's the true Mysterio. But also, not sure how I'm gonna use it, but I'm stealing that line. Hey! Like he'll stop in a few minutes? About three weeks. And if it was anyone else, I would be upset, but I know Ash can handle it. Just get that man a chainsaw. So A38 is just the cool universe, has all the Black Mirror tech, but it's like good. It makes sense that young kids with intense superpowers really would cause some problems Brightburn style. It has to be hard to come up with alternate universe fashion, but I love the subtlety of 838s. Different configurations, weird scarf placements, but everyone is wearing shades of black and white. Draws attention to the multicolored flowers and verdancy everywhere. It also seems like you can't be out in public without a hat. Were they together? No, they didn't talk anymore. He blew it. I wonder how many Lees blew it with other Julias. How do you know that? Nah, none. We've got game for ages. <laughs> All right. Hugging. Although Strange really nails the he didn't really think we were there as friends type hug. A dreamwalking sorcerer projects their own consciousness from their universe into another, possessing the body of an alternate self. I like that the Raimi crossfades here can be just that, Raimi's stylistic choices. Or it could be the drug slowly kicking in. And for me, drifting off into a drug haze would definitely be accompanied by 90s jam band rock. More monster vision, which is always fun anyway, but this time it's the point of view of a hero who's now a baddie. I know we all have TikTok filters that can do this, but nope, that's still gonna haunt my dreams. Especially with the way the champagne remains still. Why you gotta be a dick to your old self, Wanda? Man, I just love the Tempest in a teapot shot, well, teacup shot, with the seagulls and ocean sounds to go along. Ooh, the fourth wall is translucent. The Scarlet Witch just looked me in the eyes. Mom? Yes, sweetheart? 
Like I said, you'll find me to be a Wanda apologist in this one, and I love how Elizabeth Olsen fights with herself here. It's like Cobb in Inception, where all he wants to see is his kids' faces, but knows they aren't real, so he refrains. In this case, Wanda knows she has some crappy stuff to do still, and you can almost see her telling herself, okay, I'm just gonna murder a few people, murder and steal the power from that girl, and then I get to be their mom, but before that, I gotta do witch girl shiz. Either way, her trauma is deep. We promise to be good. good. I take it back though, that song makes me think she should just bail. Brutal. Another sick match cut. Ooh, and this time as her connection fades, the match cut slips out of alignment. Hot dang. I'm a senior fellow with the Baxter Foundation. Okay, I know Reed is about to show up, but if you're a nerd and didn't have the cameo spoiled, that Baxter Foundation name drop would have set off some mind flares. Uh, what were we to each other in this universe? Not sure why he wants to know, especially since he's so happy. Honestly, love that he wears it on his sleeve. This shot is awesome. At first, it just seems like a wide shot of Wendigore, but then we see those tiny glowing specks of Wanda and Wong to give us some perspective of the scale of the temple. Wong goes from ready to defend to ready to fight in a split second. That drama is deep because this would be a real are we the baddies moment for just about anyone else. This isn't a toad. It's a throne. So strange seeing a statue to another version of himself had to be weird, but seeing a statue of yourself in your own world in an evil throne room created for you? With your kids at your side? Yeah, I'd be able to. You can only ignore the signs for so long. Ultron is still a jerk in 838. Baron Karl Mordo, the Sorcerer Supreme. You hear Carl? Barl? Fair question. Captain Carter, the first Avenger. Apparently Haley Atwell is ageless, which works well when you're playing Cap. Blackagar, Baltagun. That show was... Not great, but it's awesome they let Ansem not attempt to do justice to the character. And he gets to wear the actual suit. I'm the smartest man alive, Reed Richards. The definition of fan service, and I've got zero complaints. Didn't you guys chart in the 60s? Um, Kinda. Is this a joke to you? Well, there's a guy over there with a fork on his head, so yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Again, fair. <laughs> Oh, yes. Look, you know I'm a Jim fan, but the 90s cartoon X-Men theme? And that version of his yellow wheelchair? Not much has gotten me this pumped in a while. In the infinite multiverse, there's a cure for every illness. A solution to every problem. There are helicopter moms who fix problems for their kids, lawnmower moms who prevent problems for their kids, and then there are scarlet witch moms who will murder everyone across the multiverse to make their kids immortal. I was meant to rule everything, but that's not what I want. I just want my boys. That one line is also an interesting glimpse into her psyche. This whole time she keeps claiming it's about the kids, but also, by the way, no big deal, this stone carving means I should rule everything, but don't worry, I won't, because I'm totally not having a psychotic break caused by trauma. There are worlds where you are together. Is that not enough? No. Honesty. Extreme honesty. Ha, the dominoes are falling into place? Or just, just falling? We even see the waves coming from the professor's head, just like in the cartoons. Nice touch to give him the dark finger thing going on that Wanda and Agatha had. I'm sorry. Sorry, not sorry, but also I'd like to see this story. These absolute masters went to Titan all together as a team and pwned Thanos while barely even changing the planet. Dude got slain by his own weapon. And they technically had fewer heroes than the Avengers did if you include Nebula. Which I do, and you should subscribe to. Built a statue. The world needs heroes. First hint that maybe this Illuminati doesn't know what they're talking about. Statues to real heroes might make sense. Statues to folks who commit genocide, not so much. Love that you can follow each of these camera angles from their respective Ultron, and as far as I can tell, this continuity is flawless. Just because someone stumbles and loses their way doesn't mean they're lost forever. Well, if that isn't the most Professor Xavier thing to say. Badass bad girl. And a nice cheat with the Ultron oil to give her a real carry look and stay PG-13. The first time you watch this moment, it seems pretty baller. However, on subsequent watches, it's almost funny because they all land with so much swagger and confidence and they're all about to get just absolutely wrecked. Is their mother still alive? Yes. Good. There will be someone left to raise them. You just got absolutely dundee dunked on. Take the hint, Jim. Go home to Jessica Alba. Or actually, let's say Kate Mara. What mouth? Man, I'm really starting to think Wanda is just a Matrix stand at this point. First the glass portal and now the mouth? Then hey, you should go watch my Resurrections videos because barely any of you did. Oh, this is a jaw on the floor moment, at least it was for me in theaters. You bring in all these characters and Wanda doesn't just beat them, she slaughters them with prejudice. This is not me rooting for her and it's not me laughing. 
I could do this all day. Always a great line, but we now know that he does eventually not do it all day. No. No, I don't think I will. So, bisection shadowing? Gross. And Wanda almost seems surprised that she sliced her in half. Just a note of regret there? She definitely knew of Peggy since she had a relationship with Steve. <laughs> Smushed by Xena. It's easy to understand how simple killing the others was for Wanda, as being pretty strong, saying stuff loud, or making your fingies stretch aren't exactly top tier powers. But Rambo is pretty dang powerful in the comics, so while she was the only one so far that gave Wanda any kind of fight, the fact that it still only took about 30 seconds really should let us know how much of another level Wanda is on. The main reason being that she absorbed Captain Marvel's power. That's why her mask disappears here and the blast she uses is yellow instead of red. Once Captain Marvel doesn't have her powers, Xena's gonna smush her. My vote will conclude these proceedings when they return. All of existence is being torn down around him as his friends die in horrific ways, and he thinks voting is gonna fix stuff? Well, I guess we know Mordo's a Democrat. Hey ho, political wits. Come for the butt puns, stay for the system altering commentary. I'm ready to cast my vote. Ha dang, that was a Mission Impossible 2 level close one. Although, you know, with less real metal and more magic. I didn't know how much I wanted to see Benedict Cumberbatch and Chewie Tell Edgy of 4 fight in powerless hand-to-hand -hand combat. Although it would have been easier to say if it was Chris Evans and Sam Jackson. Okay, seriously, now the construct? Is Morpheus in there? <laughs> Dreamy nightmares. Never shown this to my kids. But also this makes me want to see Wanda and X-Men Apocalypse in like four seconds. There's part of me that says, I can't believe you brought Xavier back just to kill him again, and then there's the other part of me that says, Sir Patrick Stewart is always a win, and him coming back for this little part shows why he's always a win. She fixed him. And she clearly did it with A38 Strange's cloak, which is a little weird, like getting a hand transplant from your mirror versus evil twin. It's gotta be so frustrating. An immensely powerful sorcerer held captive by handcuffs that get turned off by a Subaru key fob. Oh yes, come on with the horror Wanda. With that low angle push in and now a slasher chase scene complete with limping pursuer and her out of focus limp into frame as if possessed by Mephisto herself. And an appropriate reaction, got the same one for me in theaters. And if you're wondering what the slow-mo drips were about, it was just alerting us to what Strange's next move might be. Thank you. Sure. The value that all Strange's place on all Christine's. That'll get you. Book. Give me what I need. And it's almost too fast to catch, but it does. That's America's star on the page. Strange needs America. He needs to help her trust herself. See, this Wanda actually cares about her kids. Delta 88, Uncle Ben's car. Again, really making us feel the scale in these shots. Dang, in a movie filled with cool shots, this is an extremely cool shot. An ominous stairwell to seemingly nowhere completely disconnected from what we know is reality. Not just on its reality on its reader. I mean, look at me. Do you want to be emo too? That was probably me. Yeah, I know the eye is creepy, but how about those pointy Spock eyebrows? Love of the musical notes seem to have edges like axes and swords. The harpist fight in Kung Fu Hustle is one of my favorites, and dare I say this actually improves on that idea? Dare I? It's really inventive, that's the point. Ah, the old staff defense. Get it? Like a, like a bow staff? Ha! Strange Prime got shattered into multiple Echo Selves. Get it? Cause music- okay, I'll stop. Dubstep Electro is so jealous. This is how you music fight, complete with Bach versus Beethoven. The sound design and score here is amazing. Not since Scott defeated a failed vegan has it been this good. And if you are unclear how dangerous the musical notes are, watch the little table. And what an insane ending to the battle. Why was the harp note a nuke? No clue, who cares? Actually, wait, what if it's because it's a single clashing note? <laughs> Appropriate reaction. There's plenty of MCU characters who, if they died, I wouldn't even blink. Wong is not one of those characters. Stay safe, King. Who said they had to be living? <laughs> a more perfect line delivery. Oh man, Benedict Cumberbatch doesn't even care. Yes, a true zombie moment. Zombie horns! Danny Elfman truly stands alone! Also, he looks like a straight-up deadite. Please, please make Ash Williams part of the MCU. I'm just never gonna get tired of monster vision with the fish eye and the expressions on Christine's face. <laughs> you telling me all Strange needed to take out Gaecilius was a flame? Go back to hell. Groovy. It's corny as crap, but Eddie Munson would love that moment. Wong! That looks awesome. Badass good. Is he is he good? 
because of dark cold zombies whatever badass strange guy this time it's gonna take more than killing me to kill me <laughs> christine's reaction yeah this it's cheesy it's real me. cheesy and strange is trying to be tough and cool and he is but your number one can always see through it and knows when you're being cringe even if they're your number one from another universe <laughs> Something modern horror movies have lost is the normie voice for damn souls. Bring back the normie voices. I'm gonna take my power before Wanda can. It's okay. I understand now. Attempted self-sacrifice from America. Trust your power. And while this is absolutely a turning point for Strange that I want to talk about more in the conclusion, I love that he can't stop zombie twitching as he delivers this very heartfelt encouragement. Did I mention that Benny Cumber doesn't even care? Been waiting to do this the whole video. America! Yeah! I can't beat you. I'll give you what you want. Well, that's some ingenuity, and I truly love that America doesn't physically overpower Wanda, because, come on. Eh, even Snow White is the 838 version with a different color dress. I would never hurt anyone. I'm not a monster. Monster says what? No. Are you okay? Okay. Okay. Wanda, apologist over here again. Uh, I feel for her. There's pretty much nothing I wouldn't do for my kids, and the idea of losing them is something my brain won't even really allow me to contemplate. Elizabeth Olsen doesn't have any kids, but the pain she's showing here is right on the money. Tangible. The pain of being seen as a monster in your kids' eyes, the pain of realizing that you have to sacrifice yourself and what you need for them, it all hits her like a freight train. No, go, go, be loved. Oh boy, it's just a silly comic book movie. Why do my eyes burn so much? I opened the dark hold. I have to close it. And if you think this turn was fast, that's just what happens when your kids are involved. Did she explode or magic her little self right out of there? It's too bad, though. Could have been one hell of an incursion. <laughs> nice. She's talking about them incursioning. I love you in every universe. Still in that line, Rintra's alive. America the Dimension Hopping Sorcerer. Sounds tight. Sometimes I do wonder about my other lives. And I remain grateful in this one. Man. That's, uh, we, sh we should do that. We should all do that. Wong drop in knowledge. As you should, Wong rules, but also respect. There's something poetic about Strange fixing his watch without magic. The effort makes it a solid way of putting the past behind him and moving on. Ah, you know what Eddie Munson shredding in the background means. Oh man, they weren't kidding. Cease your dream walk. Will face the eternal consequences. But what an appropriate horror the end? Ending for this MCU horror movie. Huh. Alright. Cool. I like that even if you have no clue who Clea is, the rip she opens looks very similar to where Strange met Dormammu have come to bargain, so maybe you can figure it out. Bruce Campbell. Also, that's the fork the mini ash is used against Big Ash. <laughs> it's over! Multiverse of Madness, the second or third best multiverse film of the year? Night of the Coconut being the best, obvi. But let's get some minor critiques out of the way. Some of the dialogue is rough here and there, it can be a little extra corny. Rewrites and some obvious reshoots are hard to ignore. You can track them by Wong's ever-changing hair. I don't really care to get into it because I think the final results work extremely well. And I love Wong, he's slowly becoming one of my favorite MCU characters, so maybe we'll find out that actually it was all seven different Wongs? But I doubt it. To be clear, I think Elizabeth Olsen killed it as the baddie in this film. I also think they struggled to balance that line between full evil murderer and anti-hero just trying to get her kids back. I understand that struggle though because she can't cross the line and still, well, we'll get you back on the lunchbox. But it can make her turn at the end feel quick. And it's clear that her willingness to kill is a direct result of Darkhold. She goes full horror villain not just because Raimi wanted to have these stellar scenes, but because she compromised her morals and ethics to accomplish her goal. She was warned about the Darkhold and she did it anyway. So her turn can be looked at as her finally realizing that she was not doing any of this for her kids and it was all for her. And that's part of the movie's theme that I like completely. It's a perfect companion to the main theme that's set up right in Defender Strange's first line. This is the only way. You can't control it. But I can. And then solidified in Christine's line. You have to be the one holding the knife. Strange doesn't rely on anyone else but himself. He thinks he's right even when he's not, and he struggles to ever admit he's wrong. It's not a new message by any means, but they execute it very well. His first step to redemption is trusting Christine to help him dreamwalk, and then obviously the big turn is when he does the opposite of what Defender Strange did and trusts America. He lets go of the knife. It's a huge emotional arc for him that ends perfectly with his bow to Wong. And even beyond the thematic stuff, this film is a super entertaining watch. Apparently Olsen shot some of these sequences back to back with WandaVision, which must have been a trip. All the cameos are fantastic. Like I said, the definition of fan service and I just don't care what anyone says. But honestly, what was even more fun were their deaths. So gruesome, so unexpected. You don't get Raimi if you don't want him to 
Raimi. Benedict Cumberbatch is Doctor Strange. In every performance of the character, he does a great job of making him very likable and yet also just a little bit of a cocky jerk. And Rachel McAdams continues to be great as multiple Christines and really sells the Steven, I used to love you, but you're just too much vibe. But the real standout of the film is Sochi Gomez. It's nuts to me that she was 14 when they started filming and she carries this movie. She's never not a teen in this film, but it never feels like she can't keep up. She had to play both the captive and the hero at times, and both seemed supernatural for her. With Sochi and others like Miss Marvel's Iman Vellani, the MCU was doing an excellent job of finding the next generation of MCU characters. So, good on them. And if you want to make movies for the MCU someday, a great place to start would be with Patrick Willem's class, How to Make a Movie. He covers everything from knowing your core idea to writing, research, gear, lighting, and shooting a scene, all the way to editing and reshoots and getting feedback. Everything you need if you feel like you have no idea where to start. I did his class. It's fantastic. And as a byproduct, you get behind the scenes info on how he made Night of the Coconut. So, bonus. And this can all be found in Classes, the brand new addition to our streaming service, Nebula. There are already a bunch of different highly produced classes up there right now with new ones getting published every week. It's usually 149 for a one-year plan, but by following my link, it's only $119. And if you're already a Nebula or a Bundle member, you can upgrade for just $99. You'll find some of your favorite top creators sharing their knowledge and experience that led them to success in the best way they know how. And you'll also get a subscription to Nebula, obviously, with all the thousands of ad-free videos, plus my originals, including everything great about Night of the Coconut, and originals from so many others, as well as so, so much more. So follow my link and please check it out. I'm super duper excited about Nebula classes, especially Patrick's class. Sign up, it's a huge help to the channel, and you'll get so much more out of it. Thanks! Every mother does. I'm a mother. Is their mother still alive? I'm your mother! Oh!